Welcome. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, everyone. Back to the 307 podcast. Glad to have you here today. Um, we've learned quite a lot the last few days. This morning we learned that Chili is not a mountain bike rider. I mean, he just slap ain't one. Well, he looks like he tried. He's more of a bike hiker. If you keep him on a two, if you keep him on a nice smooth two track road, fire road, he's good. You get him off of that, he ain't even gonna try. Yeah. What are you talking about? What I do? What What I do wrong? You're just more or less a bike hiker. You talking about on the technical stuff? Yeah, I mean anything other than a fire road. How was his speed on that fire road? Uh, slow, was it? Yeah, slow all around. Yeah, he he started off at a decent pace going up House of Dreams fire road, and I thought, yep, this is this is right in alignment with Chili's style. He's going to start off fast here, and, yep. and you know he led the way. All the way up through there and talking about, boy, I wish I could run this. I'd like to run this. I said, well, we kept on up through there. And, you know, we got we got on there to the last third of the course. And uh, he pizzled on out. So. <laughs> about like him drawing his pistol yesterday. You know, he wanted to start out doing that fast as he could. He yeah. had that thing come out look like. Looked like Flash. He was looked like he was vibrating. He was moving so fast coming out of the holster. <laughs> That's the other thing. Chili earned his marksmanship badge this weekend, but he's got some work to do before he gets his expert, his E. He's got his little marksmanship badge. Now. He got the participation badge. Yeah, as yeah. of now, he's but he's got to work on getting that E. Mm-hmm. He's got his pistol marksmanship badge. You know, yeah. I don't think I earned no marksmanship badge. No, you earned that. I'll tell you what else I learned about Chili is he needs to go to the eye doctor and see about getting him some glasses. You remember he couldn't see nothing out yeah. there. Yeah. I could probably use some LASIK <laughs> eye surgery, but, I mean, we just started, we just dumped. What do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, right? we, we just dumped a lot of information, and I patiently listened to all the bull crap that you just spewed. So now it's my time to rebut what you just said. Now listen. By the way, today, you can't hold on. Let it, you gotta to, let him say his today's piece. Today's episode is going to be about essentially about the origins of racism. All right, and okay, all the way back. So interesting topic. All right, Chili, you have Chili, respectfully request permission to speak. <laughs> I might just get up and leave if I was you, Chili. <laughs> Permission granted. He's not moving crab claws on the high ropes course. <laughs> you know, I'm real close. Real close to just saying no more no more talk from Chili. <laughs> I'll just listen. No, you need to defend yourself right now because I've told the world how how you acted this morning. You know, this has been, I've been fired up today and I've just been just defeated. I was, I was fired up for a minute and then I come in here and listen to this crap and just <laughs> back down in the dumps. Well, you know what though, Chili? It could be worse. You, you could be sitting in Blake's position. Blake has made it to one 307 Project PT. I don't think I. Ha- oh well, the Murph. The Murph. He's yeah. Blake has attended one PT. Well, at three or seven project, like I think I know why. We no, like he <laughs> he's about to get counseled. <laughs> he don't want to just come get ridiculed. He wants to work out in peace. <laughs> he's about to get counseled. Son. Well, okay, listen. I don't think anybody out there expected Chili to be the master of push ups. Or pull-ups, right? No surprise there. I got, I look like a noodle. <laughs> no, you can put some muscle on. <sighs> Finally. Look, there he goes, build me back up. You need, we need, after you get done, we need to talk about how Chad acted yesterday on the range. Listen, he I mean. He wants to talk about 
my non-attendance to the meeting and your poor performance. Well, well, listen, we're, we're I've I've built this up for too long because I keep getting interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't, I, but I'm collecting my thoughts and I got something to say. <laughs> Carry on. We need to start filming these morning PT sessions because you don't tell. I mean, I'm not calling you a liar, but you lie. Oh no. <laughs> okay. I'll just walk no, them through it. I'll get. I got it on video. I'll do this. Re- I'll do this real brief. I've got him on video hiking his bike down a hill. <laughs> I'm gonna post it on Instagram. Well, I wish you wouldn't, but you know, if you want to start filming them, we'll start filming the whole time. So you see, when we're going up, up the first climb, and Chad goes, "My legs are burning. Are your legs burning?" <laughs> And I go, I, you know the reason I, I say that because I know your legs are burning and I want you to feel good about you. I want you to feel okay with that. Because what happens is when people train with me, um, they think that I'm superhuman. I don't think that. So so I remind them, I remind lesser um, men like you guys, I have to remind you guys that I feel pain too. It's okay. I'm not going to run off and leave you. I know your legs are burning. Even if my legs aren't burning, I'm going to tell you they're burning just so you don't get discouraged about doing this PT with me. All right. I've I've been battling. I've been fighting to not just unleash right now, but you're 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 bringing me you're bringing me close, man. If listen, the la- every morning PT chili screws up. Ch- chili You're ch- too squirrely, son. Chili's chili Messes up. Listen, this morning, he couldn't. He can't ride up a hill fast. He don't run up the hill at the end of his driveway when we get back from a run. That's oh, that's my cool oh, down. Oh, I hiked the hills, Chili. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I mean, I don't. So does that mean you're a lesser athlete than me? No. Okay, this morning, if you want to run through it, we go up the first climb, and he starts belly aching about how his legs are burning. And no, I'm, I'll tell you if mine are, if you ask, but they weren't. We were on the first climb, goodness. So then we get down on this technical trail. I mean, Lord, you can't even walk on it. It's so rocky and you know Rudy. Chili reminds me of Richard Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen him socks? Oh yeah, that's not Richard Simmons. <laughs> I know, but you still just remind me of Richard Simmons. He really thought that was Richard Simmons. <laughs> that's what he said when he saw me. He said, "Is that Richard Simmons?" <laughs> I said no it's bob ross what are you talking about <laughs> anyway and then we get down on this trail and he he goes faster than me i mean he's having to stop too oh no he didn't he was just waiting on me no he had to stop because you can't even go through some of that no no i was seriously just waiting on you no i know you were for the the grand scheme of it but some of that you can't just ride all through all that oh yeah, oh, yeah you can <sighs> i hadn't been down in a while but i did used to ride the whole trail when you get your skills up you can do it Whatever, I had to I had to push the bike through on some of it. So he just he gets down there and starts takes his phone out and starts filming me coming down. I mean, and then we get we get a little further and 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 drive and ride through and I mean, y'all think he never gets tired? You get tired every time, every time you work out. I just keep getting stronger. That, that's where I pull on you every time. I can't even do this. I pull on you every time in the late stages. He well, don't. I didn't ever announce it, but the other day we had a team workout in CrossFit, and Chad and his teammate lost to me and my teammate. And he would Chad wouldn't even take a picture that day. Rick was trying to get him to take a picture, and he was avoiding her at all costs. Not, he, well, didn't, he didn't want to document. Y'all hear that? He didn't want to document the loss, and him and his partner were both poopy pants about it. <laughs> and it's me and Devin versus him and Rob. I, I did have to do some lighter weight dumbbells. I just ain't quite as strong, but well, then you know, it, it doesn't even count. We that. uh, don't. I mean, the workout we won. It wasn't an even match. Oh, you yeah. weren't even doing. Look, man, you've made it. You can't even talk right now. <laughs> you made it a one team PT. Those are wor- those are meetings, not exercise times. Those are just meetings, not a. If if you y'all was really doing something worthwhile to get my heart rate up, I'd come join you. But 
all y'all want to do is just go outside and stand in the rain and meet. I'm like, y'all want to meet? Just come to the house. We'll sit inside. I if you want to work out, then let's go work out. I haven't articulated my thoughts about all this at all. It's what what the deal is is Chad. We don't. We're not racing. But but he decides at different portions of the of he does do that of the morning PT that this is a race to the top of this hill if he's in the lead and he won't let me know that so he just he just he stands up on his bike and starts pedaling fast and he gets to the top of the hill and he looks stops and looks back at me like. You're just, good Lord, Chili, you got to work on this. You're not much of a mountain bike rider. Well, I know that, but you got, if you let me know the rules of the game before we start, I might have a little more in me. If you had a little more competitive mindset, you might understand what's going on. Chad, I'm very competitive. I tell you what, I'm going to get you boys straight one day. It's going to, it's, y'all are Y'all have become a special project of mine. Nobody, I mean, nobody's more competitive than me, but I'm not going to compete if I don't know it, we're competing. Well, that's the thing. This has been a good insight for you, for Chad this weekend. You compete with Chad when the odds are ever in his favor. You compete when Chad, when he knows you're competing, but you don't. Yeah. That's when you compete with Chad. <laughs> <laughs> when he knows that it's a competition and you don't. <laughs> so that way he's assured to win. <laughs> Y'all wait till y'all see this new shirt we got coming out. Y'all wait. Look, it pays to be a winner. Y'all wait till y'all see this new shirt we got coming out. It's going to blow your freaking socks off. Anyways, you know, that's what we've been, that's what we've had going on, guys. We're trying to film a series of videos for you guys out uh, uh, on the range. Look, man. We tried yesterday. It didn't work out. We're working on this stuff. Um, we're one week, what, 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 a little over a week out from the mid-state mile, right? So, you know, I'm just trying to stay calm. I'm just trying to stay calm, and I got these men here to help me. Um, and that's where we're at. That's what happened out PT this morning. So, look. You got to do better, Chili. And Blake, you got to start showing up to PT. I man. enjoyed that PT this morning. You're going to get counseled. I agree. I got to do better, but I also want to make it perfectly clear that you lie every morning about the on the after actions report of how it went. No. You lie every time. No. Every time. I'm just going to start wearing a GoPro and I'll film the whole freaking thing. And show, uh, show the people what happens. You'll do that? Oh, yeah. I'll show the people okay. what happens. I'm up for that. <laughs> <laughs> it'll sh- it'll show you being a liar. Um, hey, you don't ever, <laughs> never do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was pretty epic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an inside joke. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, welcome. I, I mean, there's so many other things that we could talk about here, but uh, well, look. First of all, I want to tell you guys. How much, again, I appreciate you guys leaving us reviews here on uh, on the iTunes podcast player. Uh, they just keep rolling in, and this means so much to us because it helps grow the show, right? If you guys leave us a review, a rating, just however many stars you want to give us, and even if it's just one word, the more reviews we get, the more the show populates, uh, and it helps people find it, so... Um, we've got some, we've just got so many, uh, new ones on here. I'll read one. Um, this is from Dr. Brooks. I think she's actually coming out on the basic course soon. Uh, as a wife and working mom, I love this show for so many reasons. The top reason is that each podcast teaches me a life lesson and gives me a new perspective on my life for women who see a podcast by a former Navy SEAL and then skip over it because they think, It won't or can't pertain to their lives. Don't. Chad Blake and Chili speak to my body, soul, and spirit, and they will speak to yours. Enough said. Thank you so much, Dr. Brooks. That means a lot to me, and uh, it's so encouraging to me um, to know that uh, the message that we put out is applicable uh, to anybody and everybody, regardless of whether you're male or female, right? 
I mean, that, yeah. that's, that's, that's our goal, right? We, we, this is not a men's podcast. Uh, nothing that we do is, is strictly men's events. Uh, yep. we, we don't, we don't do, that's just not what we do, right? That's just not what we've been called to do. And, um, you know, this is something that's been presented to us multiple times. Let's, you know, we, we've been asked to do men's only events and, and we've thought about it. We've considered it and we have declined. And, um, we, we just think that truth is truth and training is training and it's applicable to every single human being, yeah. uh, within, you know, with, within, I want to say within the body of Christ, but even outside the body of Christ, all this, you know, the stuff that we talk about is meant for everybody. So thank you so much for that review. Thank you guys for, uh, for really just taking the time to do that for us. Uh, it means a lot to us and a lot to the show. This podcast was brought to you by ExoSkin, son. ExoSkin. ExoSkin is the number one fitness apparel on the market, in my humble opinion. Uh, I've been using ExoSkin apparel uh, on all my ultra marathons, um, bike rides, uh, wilderness trips, missions, all that stuff. Anytime that you're going to be moving, generating heat and sweat and salt and nastiness, ExoSkin is what you want to have on. Uh, this fabric actually has uh, copper fiber woven into it, which eliminates odor-causing bacteria. The material is actually channelized to move moisture uh, away from your skin, which helps cut down on chafing and nastiness because moisture and then you start rubbing, and that's what creates chafing. Uh, ExoSkin is 100% made in the USA. They have apparel that literally can fit you from your feet to the top of your head, everything from socks, which are the best socks on the market in my opinion, all the way up to your underwear, shorts, tops, arm sleeves, leg sleeves, hats, uh, hats beanies. They've got it all, right? Now, this stuff right here is made to function out on the trail, out during your activity. This this stuff is specifically made to function and fit, you know, at the event. This isn't stuff, you're not buying this stuff to wear it out to dinner, all right? that's I use ExoSkin specifically out in the field when I'm on a mission. And, um, yeah, thank you guys for, uh, for pouring into our show. They've been one of our, if not our longest running sponsor of the 307 podcast. And, um... Exoskin helped me out uh, before I even had an Instagram page or anything like that because they're, you know, Rick and Croy, they're both great Americans. They're patriots. Um, they just, uh, they believe in our mission and uh, they love their country, which is reflected through their products. Again, 100% made in the USA. They don't have to do that, but they do. Go check them out at exoskin.us online. I'll attach uh, that link in the show notes of this episode along with a pro code that's going to give you a discount uh, for any product that you purchase from ExoSkin. Sound good to you, Blake? It's great stuff. Yeah, thanks for sponsoring this show, ExoSkin. All right, <clears throat> you know, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to uh, uh, approach the, well, approach the topic of this show right here other than just bringing it back to a statement that we made on an earlier podcast um which was we were talking about the founding fathers of our nation and most uh we we i think i mentioned thomas jefferson in particular now thomas jefferson was essentially the author of the Declaration of Independence. Now, he penned it, and then, of course, he presented it to all the other members of the Continental Congress, and they did edits, and it came out to be what it was. But he's the one that penned the original copy of the Declaration of Independence, amongst many other things that Thomas Jefferson did. And we talked about how a man like Thomas Jefferson risked everything, um, for human liberty, the liberty of this nation. And then we made mention, or I made mention, that Thomas Jefferson owned about 300 slaves in 
Virginia. He had a, owned a big farm in Virginia, and um, he was basically waited on hand and foot by his slaves. He didn't have to really do much of anything, according to uh, um, what I've read about him. But, uh, you know, so he, he had great wealth. He had property. He had all this. He did sacrifice all of that for liberty. Well, there's a conflict here, and it is uh, how could someone be concerned with human liberty yet enslave humans? It, it's the, the, the contrast there is uh, it's, it's a conflicting thing. You know what I mean? And I think this all ties into uh, the topic of slavery, obviously ties into the topic of racism and uh, exploring the origins of racism and exploring how people, not just Thomas Jefferson, but many of his counterparts in, in that time, how they were so concerned with the liberty of a nation, yet they were enslaving other human beings. This is a conflicting thing. How does this happen? Chili, I mean, I know you've thought a lot about this, man. Um, what, what angle would you come at that from when, you, when you're asked that question? Yeah, <clears throat> I don't want to be too long-winded with this because I, I could literally speak on this for days and days because this is some of the most... This is what I like to study the most oftentimes... Um, and I honestly, throughout my life with what I've talked to people about and telling them about how I value liberty and I, you know, and how basically when I speak on the degradation of the society that we're living in and how we're failing to uphold, you know, what the declaration of independence said and what our constitution, all, all of our founding fathers, um, you know, what they stood for, people have asked me. How can you say all that when they were a bunch of slave owners? They were a bunch of terrible men. It's a valid question. And I, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's an extremely value, valid question. I, I'm, I'm actually thankful that people are asking that because, you know, if we just glossed over that, I think that would be, I, I, in my opinion, that'd be a horrible thing. Um, so like I said, to try to be as uh, brief as possible, and succinct, succinct as possible, you know, I, I wanted to read the, you know, one of the most famous lines in the, in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hmm. I love that. I mean, maybe some people don't get fired up when they read that, but that is what this nation was found on. Find a flaw in that. It's pretty hard to. I mean, I'm not saying it was perfect, but it's very hard to find a flaw in that. The flaw isn't in what they wrote down. The flaw wasn't in the principles that they were promoting, life, liberty, and you know, the right to property, the pursuit of happiness, all of that is great. I mean, that's what this nation was founded on. That's why we were a great nation for so long. And, and that's our foundation. We can still be, but the failure, the flaw was in what they did. I mean, Thomas Jefferson throughout the course of his life owned over 600 slaves. And you know, it's so interesting that he could, that I find it so fascinating that a human being could write down all men are created equal by their creator. He could, he literally wrote that down while simultaneously holding that many slaves. That's amazing to me. I mean, that's, but that's the question that I want to answer but is how is how, right. And, and so he, how, first of all, it comes back to human beings are flawed. We're sinful. What the principles that he was writing down were great. I, I, that's why we continue to talk about it and continue to say, we want to go back to that. That doesn't mean we want to go back to slavery. I mean, he didn't do what he said. <laughs> he wasn't doing what he wrote down. Well, he didn't view all. I mean, 
He didn't view all men as equal. That's uh, where the problem is. Uh, yeah, but, you know, here's the thing, Chili. You know, if that's the case, then, then yes, you could essentially call Thomas Jefferson a hypocrite. He was. But here, here, is, here is the question, uh, and this is what I'll delve into, is when Thomas Jefferson wrote that down, did he consider his slaves human? That, and I think this is going to be an interesting uh, conversation as we delve into this is because Thomas Jefferson wasn't necessarily a hypocrite. Thomas Jefferson might have viewed his slaves just like many other slaveholders as a less evolved form of humanoid, right? All right. What, you go ahead. And I mean, I'll, I'll keep going. I think we need to go back and forth on this because, I mean, I agree. Like, Thomas Jefferson, he wrote down many times about how he viewed slavery as a moral depravity and a hideous blot on the foundation of America. I, late in his life. Yeah. Late, late, that was in the latter part of sure. his life. Sure. But did you know that during his presidency he moved to pass legislation that would he moved to pass legislation that would increase the living conditions of slaves better their life and also to he was promoting abolition when he, while he was serving in office he really was but i think he had zero conviction for that i think he knew in his heart that the, what the holding slaves was wrong i believe that but what what he did was he was a hypocrite. He didn't. I, I think you could make the argument that many of them, maybe including Thomas Jefferson, viewed certain people as subhuman. I mean, maybe he did. That was essentially the foundation of slavery, I, right? I, I mean, right. I mean, well, slavery has been around since the beginning of time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but sla- I, I'm, I, I mean, uh, America, the 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 situation of of slavery within our nation. Well, I, I can't speak on right. warring tribes, and, yeah, because I think in a lot of ways, in in a lot of places where slavery existed, it was simply uh, one culture conquered another, and then they enslaved the people. Well, we here in America, we had our slaves, which were uh, one hundred percent African Americans. Shit, these were true Africans. African American shipped over to America, and then we enslaved that one group of people because there was an overwhelming belief that those people were not humans. All right? Here's the thing this is interesting. Thomas Jefferson was not a Christian, Thomas Jefferson openly denied the deity of Christ. He openly denied and refuted any miracles that were portrayed in scripture he actually um the jefferson bible he, yeah he, he he essentially took the new testament bible and uh he said look this is my version of the new testament bible he reduced it to 48 pages i think i think it was 48 pages he was not a christian i don't think he quite uh from what i've read he didn't quite know what to believe. And, of course, we didn't know him particularly. But this is what happens when you start to refute the, um, the teachings of the Bible. Or Bible says, the Bible says that, well, here, I'll just, I'll just read you a, a couple of things about what the Bible talks about. The, the Bible says God has made all things. God has made of one blood all nations of men. All right? We are all equal in Christ. We are all the same. We we are all humans, right? Now, when you start to drift away from what the Bible teaches us about ourselves as the human race, there's something that begins to creep in and you, you, and it's the theory of evolution, essentially. Now, Chile made a great point. Charles Darwin didn't write his piece on evolution until the mid-1800s. Now, that means nothing to me. I think that the theory of evolution preceded Charles, Charles Darwin by 
thousands of years. I, I think that it has been a, a theory because when you discredit the story, the, the true story of creation in Genesis, there's really not a whole lot left to explain what has happened here. There's really not a whole lot of other theories. You, you either believe what Genesis says about God creating us and us all descending from Adam and Eve, or you have to you have to start to think about something like the theory of evolution, or I'm going to just go ahead and start calling it the religion of evolution. Um, that's one of your other options. So Thomas Jefferson not being a Christian, I think that this is what crept in to his mind, not only his mind, but into anyone else who owns slaves in here in our nation, all right? If you were a slave owner, you were considered to be a good person. Now, they, I'm sure there were people that owned slaves that uh, were just purely evil, but you were considered to be a good person. You believed in liberty. You believed in the cause of, of freedom and, and all that good stuff, but you still own slaves. You, you, the only way for that to work is for you to believe that those people that you are enslaving are subhuman. You, you cannot convince me otherwise. You cannot be that big of a hypocrite. Like, if you're Thomas Jefferson being an, uh, out, an upstanding citizen, like, he could not be, he could not live his life with, with that level of hypocrisy. I think in his own heart, just like all other people's hearts that enslaved other human beings, this was the foundation of it. I believe that the religion of evolution is literally the foundation of all racism in our nation today. You guys you guys are confused about why racism is such a plague. That, that we cannot cure here in our nation. Y'all are confused about why this is happening. Well, do you understand that this theory of evolution, I'm about to read some stuff from you, from Charles Darwin and some of his counterparts. Do you realize this is what's being taught to every child in America? Like, they're being taught this religion of evolution from a young age, which uh, which directly promotes extreme racism. All right? So I'll, I'll let Chili say what he wants to say, and then I'll read you a few things from... No, I Darwin. mean, it, it's going to take... This would take so long to fully articulate my thoughts, and for one reason, it's because I'm not great at it, but... I mean, the first fully formed theory of evolution was actually before Charles Darwin. It was a French naturalist named Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Um, That's an abbreviated version of his name. He That was in early 1800s. Thomas Jefferson, for instance, died in 1826. Uh, but th- these naturalists and, and these people like Charles Darwin and you know, he wrote, later wrote the origin, finished writing the origin of species in 1859 after the Galapagos Islands and everything, uh, you know, where he studied on that island and studied the finches and saw that they would had adapted and changed. And, and, and he basically, based off of the earlier writings, like of Jean Baptiste, he, he, he formed that theory and wrote, wrote the origin of species. And, you know, uh, Chad's right in my opinion, when he says that that is what I think is that's used as a justification for racism. I mean, I think racism existed before the theory of evolution. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's been around basically since there was people. I I believe that the the religion of evolution has been around since there were people that, that, that lost that, that essentially people that have lost, Ever since the fall of man, like I, I, I have, I, I just, I have to believe that this thought that some human beings are whatever you want to call it, less evolved than others, 
I have to believe that that's been around for a long, long time. I, I don't know the history behind it. What do you think? Because the fall of man started with Adam and Eve. Right. So there, there had to have been a period of time, some period of time. I don't know how many generations, but there had to have been some period of time where it was not. Where people didn't think it wasn't that. a thought, yeah. Adam yeah. and Eve did not think that, <laughs> yeah. and their sons did not think I mean, that. And, and as it goes down, but I mean, I think it probably did come up much earlier than the 1800s, and how much it was broadcast, I don't know. But. I don't think the theory of evolution did. I think racism existed before that. I think people, yeah, not long after the creation, after creation, people started thinking. Mm. I mean, they were all like the same race for <laughs> for a very long time right i mean if you talk about you know up until noah's flood there was only a handful of people in the world okay and then after that later down the line you've got the tower of babel the languages are confused people start spreading out i mean at that point you could start making the argument okay they look different than us that's a different tribe that's a different you know and and they were racist i mean they they thought they thought just because they had different skin color or different hair color or different traits, yeah, different, different whatever level of intelligence, different, right. Uh, then yeah. that they were less than, you know, but I mean, I just, you know, I think the theory of evolution came along later with these, this, this, after the enlightenment, there was this, you know, naturalist movement where people rejected intelligent design and they started forming the theory of evolution. And then, you know, through that, People started saying, "Oh, maybe this idea that we're not all this, you know, some people are evolved. We're all evolved, and some people are less evolved than others. And you're su- this group is subhuman, and they're inferior to us. I mean, that's literally what Hitler believed. Oh yeah, that's yeah. how he justified his racism. A hundred percent. I mean, racism definitely, in my mind, pre- preceded the theory of evolution. It just the evolu- the theory of evolution came along and justified that. Well." It, it, here's the thing, and, and this is what we're trying to draw a line here. The religion of evolution, we, we can sit here and disprove it and talk about how stupid it is. We could do a whole podcast on that, which we have. But what we're trying to say here is this is, it is actually this religion of evolution is actually dangerous. And I believe that throughout human history, any race of people that looked at another race of people and thought that they were superior. So if you're a race of human being and you look at another race, racial group and you say we are superior to them, that supports the religion of evolution. That thought in and of itself, seeing yourself as a superior form of homo sapien, that supports the religion of evolution. Whether it was articulated as the religion of evolution or not, that agenda supports the doctrine of evolution. I, I think it's a uh, it's a heart issue. It goes back to you know we talk about racism was there first, and we're not debating that. But there was a heart problem in the beginning, and that's why some people thought of other people less. That's why, I mean, that that's what it boils down to is they're not seeing everybody as equal. It's, there's an issue in their heart, and I think that evolution becomes really dangerous because all along people know that that's wrong but deep down it's hard to do wrong if you don't have some means of of justification like if you know man what i'm doing is totally wrong and i can there's nothing that i can do to justify if i wanted to kill somebody and i said they have not done me wrong they're a good person i have no means to justify it's really hard to go do wrong but the minute you can somewhat conceptualize evolution and say oh well let me bind to this side and and this provides some means of justification to this heart problem that i have with issues with with the standards i know i need to be living by and then it almost gives you permission to go act on those things that that you that you really Mm -hmm. want your flesh wants to go do Mm -hmm. and i think that's i mean to me that that is one dangerous portion of buying into that i agree 100 percent. i mean this this is one of the most effective um things that satan has ever interjected into humanity is this religion of evolution this is one of the most effective things that has allowed 
men and women to justify extreme acts of evil to include slavery, in my opinion, uh, that has ever existed on, on the face of the earth. And this is worldwide. And I think that this thought process, although it was not articulated as the religion or theory of evolution until later on, I think that this thought process was in, injected into humanity by Satan at a very early day, and it's been used to justify extreme evil for quite a long time. Let me read you here real quick what your children are being taught in school. Um, or, or at least, let me read you some writing from the man who articulated this religion of evolution um, for the first time in a published uh, piece of literature. Uh, Charles Darwin wrote, many uh, pieces on this. Uh, the most, uh, I guess, well-known is The Origin of Species. And uh, here's something Charles Darwin said, and then I'll read you a little bit from what his um, one of his uh, uh, predecessors, Thomas Huxley, said. Here's a piece from Darwin, which is just one piece. You can find many things that Darwin, the father of... Uh, the, the concepts that your children are being taught. You can find many things that he has said that are absolutely horrific. Um, at some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. At the same time, the anthropomorphosis apes will no doubt be exterminated. The break between man and his nearest allies will then be wider, for it will intervene between man in a more civilized state, as we may hope, even more than the Caucasian and some apes as low as the baboon, instead of now between the Negro or the Australian and the gorilla. Here's a little bit from Thomas Huxley, who was an ardent advocate of Darwinism. Here's a piece of his writing. No rational man, contingent of the facts, believes that the average Negro is equal, still less the superior of the white man. And if this be true, it is simply incredible that when all his disabilities are removed and our progranthius relative has a fair field and no favor, as well as no oppressor, he will be able to complete success compete successfully with his bigger-brained and smaller-jawed rival in a contest which is to be carried on by thoughts and not by bites. We can see here the, the horrific nature of the men who literally pinned the, the, the doctrine that's being taught throughout our entire society to all young people. These are some of the most ardent racists that ever walked the face of the earth. Some of the most outspoken and ardent racists that literally are responsible for genocide on many occasions. It was not only Darwin and Huxley, the top two evolutionists who were racists. All of them were. You cannot be a student of the religion or a believer in the religion of, of evolution without being a racist. It is impossible for you not to look down on other groups of human beings. The only, the only solution for racism in our world is the gospel and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It is the only solution. You cannot do this through convincing. You cannot solve this problem through, uh, through, through debate. You cannot solve this problem through affirmative action. You cannot solve this problem through any cultural programs. The only solution is belief in the gospel and the doctrine of the Bible and what it says about us as human beings. What do you got to say about that, Chili? Well, the <laughs> That's the most important thing that's been said. I mean, we were we we're sitting here basically splitting hairs because 
I mean, the, what's undeniable is what, the thought that's been around ever since there was, you know, people's look different, differences in people, is racism and tribalism. I mean, that's been around since that. And and what my point is, maybe you disagree. My at least my way of saying it is what happened. What came along, those naturalists came along and basically were racist before they and then they they invented whatever you want to say came up with the theory of evolution to basically justify that racism yeah. that was inherent in their heart after the fall of man. That's my point. <laughs> I haven't articulated that well until now. I think. Like, I don't think the theory of evolution was was before racism. I think racism was around, tribalism was around, and eventually, in the 18th, in the 19th century, you know, the mid-1800s, uh, they basically wrote down a, a, a justification for it, a reason why they were correct. Yeah. They were yeah. correct in their minds because... We evolved from apes. Apes are a lesser, you know, a less evolved version of Homo sapiens. And and basically, when you see these differences in races, that it was just like a, you know, it's a progression. Yeah, we, we were more. I mean, that that's. Well, and, I agree and, with you. And, like, and I think too. Again, you you talk about tribalism, and these things were were around for for uh, for. You know, basically far, forever. Far, yeah, for, for basically forever. Um, but you know, I, I think that defining the the concept of of the the the, race, the word racism that we're talking about has nothing to do with tribalism. It, it has nothing to do with, when we define this word. It has nothing to do with looking at another culture of people and wanting to to defeat them or enslave them for your own personal gain. The, the racism that we're speaking of here that's being taught, the racism that I'm accusing Thomas Jefferson of, uh, that racism is, it, the, the definition of that is looking at another group of human beings and saying, they are lesser than me, therefore yeah. I have the right to enslave them. That's what I'm talking about when, when I'm saying this, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, interesting, it, 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 it's so interesting did, did you know that the Catholic Church has uh, chosen, came out, a, 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 the, the Pope himself, to accept the basic tenets of the religion of evolution? Do y'all understand how dangerous this is? Do y'all understand how important this is? Do y'all understand the need for each of us to educate ourselves on these topics, do you understand how important it it is for you to be able to explain to your children the danger and the fallacy of this satanic religion of evolution? All right, do you understand how important it is for you to educate yourself enough to be able to rebut these this crap that is being taught in today's culture? It is very important. All right? That's why I've encouraged you guys to start to pick up a dang book and start educating yourself. The Bible tells us that we should all be ready to make a case for why we believe the way that we believe. You cannot make a case for anything unless you choose to get educated on these topics. All right, that's the call to action right now. This, I've told you guys about this book a half a dozen times, The Long War Against God by Henry Morse. There's a whole chapter in this book that is specifically, uh, specifically addresses um, how racism correlates with the religion of evolution. All right, that's only one. This book right here is going to educate you and allow you to make a case uh, against this in so many different ways. Not only a case against it as a logical uh, theory, but to be able to identify the dangers of it. I think it's important. 
Yeah, it's real important, especially if you have if you have kids and stuff. I mean, you need to be able to to do it, you know, debate it with other adults and convince them. But when your kid comes home, if you send them to public school and they're talking about this, you know, I mean, I I'm challenged to even dig deeper into it and and figure out how to explain it on a child's level, you know, because. Yeah. It, a kid can't listen to this podcast and say, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. you got to be able to really explain it to them, and if you know the facts well enough, you can use your own language to drop it down a little bit and explain it to a little kid. You know, what? I mean, I don't know what age they start learning this. It's got to be in elementary school. Yeah, I'm sure it is. They have nothing. I mean, they, they're, they're dang sure not teaching creationism, and they're dang sure not teaching about the Bible. Yeah. Um. So... Hey, we had a great conversation last night on resurrected. Uh, I don't. We we had quite a few people on that call. Uh, I, I and and last night we talked about some uh, uh, some other hot topics. If you can't tell, we 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 have chosen to have these conversations that most other people aren't willing to have. And we talked about tolerance. We talked about um, our tolerance as sons and daughters and followers of Jesus. Uh, our tolerance for the cultural narrative, we define tolerance uh, specifically as the allowable deviation from a standard, all right? And um, we asked ourselves a- as, a, as a group last night during our live discussion, should we be concerned as Christians uh, with the state of our nation, culture, and our communities? Um, and we also said, should we tolerate anti-biblical cultural narratives in order to simply not turn non-believers off to the message of the gospel. We had some wonderful civil discourse. Did you know it's possible to have civil discourse revolving around topics like abortion, homosexuality, taxes, um, all this other stuff? Did y'all know that was possible? It is. It's possible. We proved it last night. And, uh, I, I, you know, when we talk about this tolerance, I want to call our, our sister Esther out on something that she said that really impacted me last night. And she said, it's better to light a candle than to complain about the darkness. I want y'all to think about that. As you, as you, uh, we had a, we had a fresh poop sandwich delivered into our inbox this morning, as a matter of fact, um, and, <laughs> As you're uh, encouraged by culture to eat your poop sandwich, um, and you you got you got a gut full of it, I want you to think about what Esther said. It is better to light a candle than to complain about the the, the darkness. Um, we have enough commentators. We have enough commentators out here. That's covered down on. Um, be the person to figure out what it looks like to light a candle in order to drive out the darkness. That looks different for all of us. It's going to look within the body of Christ, each one of us, that's going to that's going to look different. I know for Esther she's running for Congress for a second for the second time in uh, the state of Illinois. That is her choosing to light a candle and put herself in a position where she can make actual change um, and strive against the darkness, I commend her for that. And uh, maybe that doesn't. Not, maybe that's not what it looks like for you. Uh, I know she called out a lot of specific roles. You know, she said a great thing. You know, if you don't like what's being taught in schools, you need to go run for a position on the school board. You need to uh, volunteer for after school programs so you can give these kids another voice, another option of of what they of what they are hearing from the adults that they look up to. Um, and I think ultimately, as we talk about lighting a candle and what that searching for what that looks like in our own lives, you have to keep in mind, and we kind of ended the call with this, or I did on my piece, you have to keep in mind that if you decide to stop just simply being a commentator and you want to take some action, uh, it is going to require some level of sacrifice. I want you to understand that that none of us that decide to take action um, against these cultural narratives, uh, none of us get away 
with it without some level of sacrifice, yeah. whether that's your time, whether that is your image, um, whether that is your 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 followers on social media. Um, it, again, the sacrifice is different for all of us, depending on what you decide to do and what where you decide to go. But understand that's a part of it, and you need to stop fearing it, and you need to suck it up and say, this is part of being someone who takes action and not simply being a commentator. Well, it's not even really a, a sacrifice because we all have something that we should do, and you going and doing that is you being who you should be. It's not a sacrifice. That, by you sitting at home is a sacrifice because you're sacrificing everybody else because you're not going to go do anything. It, I mean, if if you're spending time doing it, it's because that's the time you should be doing it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not a... But it takes time. It's, it's going to take time away from your 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 Netflix show. Well, yeah. Wh- which, pe- which people consider that a sacrifice. But Netflix is the sacrifice. <laughs> that's how people should think. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. sacrificing who I should be because I'm going to sit here and watch Netflix. Yeah. So... Get out and do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen uh, on our end, you know, we, we talk about this the, in the simplest form of sacrifice from our end. You know, on this podcast in particularly, I've, I've watched the numbers on this podcast literally go up and down, up and down, and it revolves around um, the, the conversations that we have and the, the topics that we choose to uh, to go ahead and, and and call into the light, right, and expose the the fallacy of them, and uh, you see a distinct num- you just see, see a distinct drop in the numbers once you have those conversations, and it's the same on social media. You guys have seen me post multiple times of uh, you know on my story. You, you talk about Jesus on a post, and you you're going to immediately lose some people and that's just you know that's a very very minor sacrifice in comparison with uh with what others have and are sacrificing and um i stand ready to sacrifice more as we progress forward with our mission we're just getting started so i just wanted to kind of recap that conversation obviously it went far more in depth on our resurrected call uh we just got such a powerful body of people there in that call with such uh, with such just solid wisdom and input, very very people that I that I highly highly respect what they have to say. Yep. So, well, I don't know if we. Uh, I guess we drew a few conclusions on this podcast. I just I just wanted to call that out and, and just address that um, that that's been kind of floating around in my head ever since we did that podcast and we mentioned that conflict between our founding fathers and and them being slave owners interesting thing you look at John Adams was a uh was a very devout man of god very very uh solid foundational christian um he never ever owned a slave uh, he was actually he was gifted a slave at one point. He immediately set the person free. Why did he have the ability to do that? Because his truth was rooted in the story of Genesis and what Jesus Christ told us about ourselves as human beings. And um, it reflects. I think it definitely yeah. reflects. So... That's what I got for today's episode. I know some heavy, heavy conversation. Poor old Chili over there. He's just uh, he's having a hard go at it, son. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like I articulated my thoughts well. I mean, I think to put a. I think you articulated them well. I just think I disagree with you. Well, no, that's. Oh, I don't. I don't think I articulated them well. But that's fine if we disagree. But I think to put a cap on, like, I don't even think we addressed actually the first question of how can you, you know, promote these ideas that these men held when they had this, you know, black mark on their life. And, and basically all I wanted to say to that is, you know, we're, everybody is flawed. We're yeah. sinful human beings and I don't promote <laughs> what they did. I don't promote that. I yeah. promote what 
they said that I agree with. I mean, the idea of life, liberty for all men, which they did, you know, many of them, I mean, almost everybody that was, you know, came over, didn't uphold those standards. So I, I disagree with that, but I agree with life and liberty for all men. That's all I've ever promoted, you know? Yeah. So I, to answer that question clearly. Yeah. And we, we also solved the problem of racism by saying, uh, yeah, by saying like, we were all created equal by yeah. God. <laughs> why don't you, why don't you trust in what God and Jesus Christ tells you about humanity? Promise you, you 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 cannot be racist yeah. if that's the foundation of your belief system. It leaves no room for it. Jesus Christ Himself left no room for it at all. He he even brought it to the point that we are not even male and female under Him. He doesn't even see us as male and and female. We we are all literally one. one in Christ in the body of Christ. There is no race. There is there that that is the only solution. So, hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. We'll be talking to y'all next week. That'll be our last episode before the uh, Mid State Mile. Um, no telling what'll be happening then. So, uh, stand by. Enough said. <laughs>